Oh, where to start? Where to start? I suppose we just start at the beginning, don't we? <laughs> I know some of you have worked it out, some of you haven't, so here it is. Let's just put it on a plate. Hi, I hope you're all well. If you're new around here, hello. It is lovely to meet you. And if you are returning, thank you very fucking much for coming back. And if you are returning, thank you for sticking about as well, I have to say. It has been a while. If you are new around here, my name's Alana. I'm a lady, 37, and I live in Scotland. That is where my accent is from. And on this channel, I predominantly talk all things kind of beauty, skincare, hair care, lifestyle, travel -y, bloggery, vloggery bullshit, but with a liberal sprinkling of sarcasm and cynicism thrown in on top. There has not been a lot of uploading at all recently. Uh, I have not been active on Instagram either. Uh, and I kind of got to a point, <laughs> maybe after the kind of two month mark, where I just thought, I'm just not gonna bother until I reveal. And if you're watching this video, you've probably seen the title. You know, you already know. Okay, so this is going to be a video about the explanation of why I've not been here. You know, because it's in the title and kind of what's been happening. Um, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's just get into it. Also, no changes here. I do still like the odd sweary word on this channel, so if you're not into that kind of thing, I completely understand. Feel free to vacate. But if you don't mind that kind of thing, that sounds like your cup of tea, there's a wee subscription button in the corner. Give it a thumbs up, all that other YouTuber crap, okay? Grab yourself a drink, it might be a long one. So first things first, for this video, I think I probably look glamorous. <laughs> I look done anyway, I've got some makeup on. Uh, and I feel like this has not been me for the last, I'm gonna say five months going on six months, okay? Uh, there was still videos that went up, I think a couple of months ago, I kind of uploaded them. Uh, I did say at the time like, oh yeah, I went to Berlin with my friend, I had all this intention of vlogging that. I ended up going to Greece uh, last month, had intention of vlogging that and didn't. And as time went on, it just got harder and harder to actually put a video up. Now that's not me being the typical YouTuber being like, oh, it's so hard, but it is hard. See, once you get out of the swing of things, it's hard to get back into it. But as a mum of a two and, what is he, two and three months now? Two and three month year old, I am a busy woman. I am a busy lady. I also work as well. Um, and it's just a busy life at the moment. So it's been hard to find time to squeeze things in. On top of finding out that I was pregnant back at the start of March, which, believe me, it was a shock. <laughs> If anybody's watched my pregnancy vlogs previously from when I had my son Jack, uh, you will know it was not an easy pregnancy. It was not something that I went into lightly because we had a lot of, I have type 1 diabetes, I have had heart surgery three times in my life, uh, one when I was seven, eight, and then a small one when I was 16. I have a kind of chronic congenital heart condition that has now been rectified. I also live with um, hypertension, chronic hypertension off the back of that. And then post-pregnancy, after I had my little boy, I ended up with uh, hyperthyroidism, uh, thyrotoxosis, and then subsequently from that had hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid. So I had a lot of things going on. This was not planned. <laughs> And that doesn't mean to say that I'm not happy that I'm here. It doesn't mean to say that we're not pleased what is happening is happening. But it certainly wasn't on the cards for this year. I can assure you of that. Uh, so it came as quite a shock. Uh, and I didn't have any plans in place. I hadn't spoke to any of my teams. Like, I'm thinking about trying for another baby. Anything like that. So this was a real shock to the system. Um, although, here we are. And I am currently, while I film this, 24 weeks, I want to say. Do you know something? In your second pregnancy, you just, you don't count the way you used to. <laughs> you just don't. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm about 24 weeks at the moment and it's been emotional. I was promising myself I wouldn't cry. I'm going to try really hard not to cry. But I have struggled. And it's not because the pregnancy itself has been horrific. There's been a lot of things about this pregnancy that have been a lot better than the one I had with Jack. And there's been a lot of things about this pregnancy that have been 10 times worse than the one I had with Jack. And I think, honestly, emotionally, I've really struggled in this pregnancy. And I think it was because I was not prepared for this. The first time I knew what I was going into, I knew that I was going to be like, I need to be on top of my blood sugars. I need to be monitored all the time. People are gonna be contacting me weekly. I'm gonna be like big brothers watching type thing. Uh, and I needed to do everything correctly. 
obviously I am still doing that, but I just wasn't ready emotionally and mentally for that. So I've had to just get back into it again and, and do it obviously to make sure everything's fine for the little person that is in my belly. But it's been tough. And I feel like this time round, there's been a lot of other emotions alongside that that I've really been struggling with. Um, again, again, I'm trying, sorry, trying the hardest, but the hormones are oh, fucking rife right now. <laughs> but the last time when I had my little boy, I had a section. I had a really, really, I remember there was a really, really emotional video I put up when I was trying to decide what the best options were for me. I'm going to stick it in the corner actually so you can see it because uh, I actually spoke to a friend about it the other day who's also currently pregnant and going through a very similar decision and I was like listen you're not alone this was my like in bare sight feelings and thoughts look at this video um, and this time the decision of being like do I have natural birth do I have a c-section it's not taken out my hands. I could have pushed again to have a V-back, which is like when you actually go for vaginal birth after a C-section. But I still have all the issues that I had the first time. So I feel personally for me, it would have just been silly to go for the vaginal birth the second time round when the C-section was what I chose the first time. So I still, I don't have the emotional what's the word I want to say? The, I'm not wrought with emotions because I have to make that decision. I feel it was kind of taken out my hands this time. I knew I was going to be having a section this time, which was fine. However, there are a lot of things off the back of that that I now think, oh, I'm going to have to deal with that again. And it's it's hard. Um, my recovery was really good. Again, just not to put anybody off here because again, I was recently speaking to a friend who had the same decision to make. My recovery was perfectly fine. My section itself went quite smoothly. I lost quite a lot of blood but I was not aware of that at the time. It was so professional. I was not told that till after. Um, so that was all very good. Um, unfortunately though, oh sorry, unfortunately Jack was taken to the neonatal ICU. I don't know if I ever actually sat down in front of the camera and like spoke about this or spoke about my birth story. I don't think I did. I done lots of stuff in the lead up to it, talking about like what I was in my bag when I was going to the hospital. I done lots of vlogs in pregnancy, but I don't feel like I ever actually sat down and spoke about the aftermath because I'm someone who, obviously because I've not been on here for a few months, doesn't like to talk about things uh, with the world or with anyone, <laughs> if I'm honest with you, even close friends and family, when I'm going through it. I like to try and make sense of it myself first and then I put the things out there because then I feel like I can explain to people what was going on at the time. However, I don't know if I ever done that with his birth and then him going to the ICU. I didn't really speak to anybody about it. Obviously, I spoke to friends and family. Obviously, I told them it was shit and like I've spoke to other and I've spoke to other people since. But I don't I never spoke to anybody professional about it. And that, this time, is one of my biggest fears because it was horrible. And you know something, again, I'm always very much this kind of person that's like, there's people so much off, worse off than myself. Um, I actually, very unfortunately, had a friend who lost a baby, um, a couple that I know, and they were obviously went to neonatal ICU and they lost their little one. And I think about them and I think, oh my God, like, I was only there. I was only there with Jack. Not me personally. Jack was only there for two weeks. And it was probably the worst two weeks of my life. It's it still now, the moment I think about it, it all comes flooding back. So I can't bear to think what my poor friends have been through. And it all comes flooding back because I know, I know this time there is a chance that could happen again. Um, the last time it was like, oh, there's a tiny chance it might happen, but it was kind of downplayed, I feel, now, looking at it from the outside, like, I think they just played it down because they didn't want me to worry. But he did go, and it was quite common, and all the things that were wrong with him, it was like, yeah, this happens sometimes after section. So he was fine in the end. He's like a lively, wonderful, like, this little person who I have so much love for, and I can't even describe to you. I sometimes I'm just like, son, you are the world. Like, you're so amazing. And I love him to death. And 
I kind of had forgot about that stuff that had happened. And I think because we never thought, we never ever thought we would be here a second time round, um, it's not that we'd ever said like we didn't want more children, just because of the pregnancy and what we'd been through, we were very aware that we didn't know if we wanted to go through that again. We'd even kind of flippantly spoke about potentially looking into adoption and stuff like that. If we did want to have another child, we genuinely did not think we would be here again. So now that, you know, if, if I'd sat and thought and spoke to Alan and said, let's try for another baby, then mentally I could have prepared myself to know this could happen again, Alana. You're going to have this, 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 and this. These things are going to happen again. And mentally I've prepared myself for that because this was very much a surprise. Um, I've, I've really struggled and I'm currently really struggling with the idea of what if it happens again? What if it's worse? Because I'm one of these motherfuckers that's like, everything's obviously going to be worst case scenario. Um, what if something happens to me? And that's not a selfish, like, oh, me. It's because now I have a child and Alan. I had Alan last time, and I was worried about that last time, but I'm so much more worried about it this time. Um, I keep thinking, like, all these awful things, like, something's going to happen to my family, something's going to happen to me, something's going to happen to Alan, something's going to happen to Jack. And it's like, my brain can't get out of that and I'm really struggling with it, so much so that I have had to go and speak to the doctor and, and I am speaking to someone professionally now. So for that reason, that's why I've not been here because there's been a lot going on that I've just had to be coping with personally in my own life, but also everyday life that, you know, I still have a two two and three month year old, I hate saying two and three month year old, but you get to the point where you're like, I can't keep saying however many, what is it like, 28 months, or so. I can't keep saying that. Um, but anyway, life is just really busy with a little one. It always is, it is currently the summer holidays and I will have filmed this so he doesn't have nursery days where I would get a wee break to do things. And when he was still at nursery up until uh, the start of June, um, I did have those days, but I just felt so either very, very sick at the start again, had hyperemesis again, was on anti-sickness three times a day, either that or very, very, very tired. I have found this pregnancy way more exhausting than I did the first time. The first time I was exhausted, but I don't think I was so aware of it because I wasn't chasing a little one about. I was just on the couch feeling sorry for myself. Um, whereas this time you, you don't really have that option. And you know, Alan, is a wonderful support, he's a wonderful partner. I've said this in many a video, like I'm, I say I'm so lucky to have him, but we're lucky to have each other. We're just, we're a wee team and it's the way it is. I can't imagine my life without him. And he helps me loads. We have family that come and help as well. I am blessed that I have, you know, in-laws that don't live that far away that can take Jack for an afternoon if I need to go and do something. I know there's people out there who are either single parents or parents who have way more than one child and I'm like, how, how do you do it? How do you do it? I am in awe of you, honest to God, well done. Um, so I'm very blessed, I'm very lucky that way and I'm not a religious person, but you know, I'm just saying that I'm very, very lucky that way. But it hasn't taken away from the fact this pregnancy has been hard. Uh, and you would have seen a video that was up of me in hospital I was pregnant at that time. I did not divulge it at that time. I'll stick it up here if you haven't seen it. Uh, and I was taken in with urosepsis, which is urinary infection that just got so bad that I then needed to be in the hospital and um, was given antibiotics via drip. And I got really, really unwell. So all that had happened. Then what I didn't have in my last pregnancy was low blood pressure. And I'm someone that has high blood pressure. I live with chronic hypertension and I take medication for that. Um, so I was already taking medication to lower my blood pressure, but actually my blood pressure was dropping already and I was having episodes of fainting and what you might call syncope. Um, and it was just hellish. It was it was really bad. I couldn't eat. And last time I think as well, um, I do have vlogs going up. They will go up today to coincide with this video because I kind of want to catch up to where I am now and be able to just put up normal weekly vlogs again. Um, but I do have like a trimester one, trimester two, I think 
when we be two in trimester two section. Uh, but th those videos will be coming off the back of this being uploaded as well. And I couldn't, I didn't have this in my first pregnancy, but I had f food aversions. There was things that I was like, oh, I can't look at that. I couldn't look at a coffee in my first pregnancy, which I had a little touch of at the start with this one. But it was more any fluid. Water, juice, fizzy juice, coffee, ho hot chocolate, like any kind of liquid that I was trying to get into my system, I was like, I am going to spew. And I was taking anti-sickness tablets. So, you know, I wasn't going to spew, but oh my God, the nausea. Nausea is one of the most debilitating things as far as I'm concerned. But that on top of low blood pressure, and low blood pressure can be a consequence of dehydration if you're not drinking enough and your blood pressure is dropping anyway. And I am on medication for low blood pressure. So that had to be titrated quite a lot. I had to make sure like... I can't just come off it, but I had to, like, if there was a day where I was like, I fainted yesterday, I'm not going to take my medication today, I'll titrate it back up tomorrow, and I'd have to go, like, on a day, off a day, on a day, off a day. Obviously, my diabetes has been monitored weekly by my team. It's just been a lot. I've had MRIs for my heart again. I've been looked at by cardiology. They've increased my levothyroxine. There's just a lot going on. And so that is why I've not been here. That is why I've just, like, I mentally have not been able to be here and sit down and do it. And even now, mentally, at 24 weeks, I can't sit and say, like, oh, I'm feeling fine now, I'm through the tough bit, I'm just enjoying this little middle period in trimester two, because mentally I'm still really, really struggling. As I say, I've got the fears about what will happen. I also have lots of apprehension and anxiety around, like... How do you spread your love? Like, I've spoke about it in some of the vlogs, as I say, that will go up to coincide this, but mentally, like, how do you do that? And I know there are so many people who will be like, you'd be amazed. Like, you don't have to split your love. Your love just grows. That's what I've heard from so many people. Um, but I just have all this, like, apprehension and fear. Like, I give so much to my son. And I don't feel like, I've said it so many times in videos here, like you don't want to lose yourself completely. You want to keep little parts of you because if you stop doing the things that make you, you, then that's where you start to slip into a bit of a dark and slippery slope. And I think that has happened over the last six months because I haven't been coming on and doing things like this. I haven't been sitting down and putting makeup on. I mean, honest to God, there's been weeks where it could be three weeks in a row and I haven't put a thing on my face, not even skincare, because I have just not been there. There's been, you know, two or three days in a row when I haven't showered because mentally I have been in a bit of a dark hole just going round in circles and my brain won't stop, but I, I need to keep going. I feel like I've been on a hamster wheel and there's just no time to do anything. <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck? And it's just been really, really overwhelming. But I've spoke about before that if you start to lose those aspects of you, then it just makes your kind of mental health a little more difficult, no matter what it may be. You might not be somebody who sits and does YouTube as a hobby. You might do have a completely different hobby, completely different thing that makes you you, your gym. You maybe like to go and go to a fucking class or, I don't know, go shopping, whatever it is, get a haircut, get your nails done, whatever it is that you're like, that's my time for me, that's what I like to do. Once you start to lose that, you start to lose yourself a wee bit. And that's exactly how I felt, especially in the kind of, I would say like, this month I'm a bit better, but the last maybe three months before that, I really, really was just at a point where I was like, I don't know who I am anymore and this is really tough and I just need to keep going. And it's not until recently, like when I went to the doctor and when I like, had to speak to someone, I'd be like, I need to get back into what I do. I need to get back into a routine. Um, I need to get back into getting myself outside. There's been days where um, if Jack does go to his grandparents, for instance, I might just sit and not talk all day. Like, I don't speak to a soul. I'll just sit and, well, I watch, I watch Bridgerton back to back. I've, <laughs> I've done lots of other things on days where I've had time to myself. But I feel like I've not done anything productive. And the thing is, I know they'll say to you, like, be kind to yourself in pregnancy, just give yourself time. I get that and I agree with that profusely. But I also feel like the less you do sometimes, the worse you start to feel and you get more and more of a hole because you're like, I didn't do that yesterday, I should have done it today, blah, blah, blah. 
and then the world just feels like it's coming in on top of you and that's that's how I've been feeling and I don't feel pressure to get videos up on YouTube. I've said it before, I'm not like some sort of professional YouTuber, that's not what I'm here for. I actually have the intention to film a video off the back of watching one that Jen Love put up. And honestly, she just articulated so well what I've been trying to say for the last maybe six to eight months about how YouTube and Instagram and all this, these areas, these social media things have changed hugely to become a bit more like QVC and it's really difficult to find just genuine people who want to sit and chat about stuff or review things or just blather on about their life. Um, people are all out there to, it's all about like making the coin, getting the getting the follows, getting it, and I'm just like, I, I can't be bothered. So I don't feel pressure from that aspect of things, but I do feel pressure from myself just to do a little bit more stuff for me so I feel better. And then when I don't do it, I feel worse for not doing it. Um, currently at the moment, Jack is having a nap, so that's why I'm, I'm filming this just now. Uh, but most days, especially at the start and kind of when I was going through the, the fainting and the sickness and all this kind of stuff uh, that kind of went into my second trimester, um, through that, during his nap times, I was like, I ain't moving, I'm not getting off this couch. Or I'd be climbing back into my bed myself and just sleeping because I just did not have the time. And recently it has been more like, I will climb back into bed and go to sleep because it is easier to go back to sleep than to be awake with the way my brain has been. That That's honestly, and that's a kind of dark place to be, but I'd rather come on and admit that and say that's what's been happening um, and hopefully get through this at the other side and hopefully at the end of it, I feel like I've not spoke about like the exciting side of things. You know, having another little baby coming, which is really, really is very exciting, but also the way I've been feeling, and you do feel a bit different in second pregnancy, like, I, this time, don't feel that urge to be like, oh, go out and like, uh, you know, buy all the baby stuff, do all that, because to a certain degree, I have a lot of stuff from when I had Jack, I did not keep much, because as I said, we did not think we would be here a second time round. So all the things like sterilizers, bottles, um, any like, small baby stuff like baby grows, play mats, all that stuff, gone. Gone. Car seats, uh, bassinets, like the thing you used to sleep with at the side of the bed, gone. Donated, given to people, gone. We did not think we would be doing this again. So we do have to go out and, and get some things again and my, my plan is to do everything very much more second hand this time because we also we were already thinking about moving this year, but now it's like, we probably need to move this year, which is another pressure that we've got on our plate at the moment. I would much prefer to move before baby gets here, but we just have not seen anywhere suitable to go to yet. Um, and as I say, if I start buying this stuff, I really do not have the space in this place at the moment to have more stuff in my house for another child. Um, and I know that sounds so entitled because there's people who have not got a fucking stitch and not got anything to them and they might have three or four children. But I just feel like my house has enough in it already. That in itself is also affecting me mentally, like my anxiety, because I'm like, oh my God, we already were outgrowing this place. We needed to move. And now we're going to be really outgrowing this place. And listen, if it happens and we need to stay here, that's what's going to happen. It'll be fine. I know deep down in my soul it'll be fine. But in my mind, I'm like, oh, there's so much going on. So there is the excitement of there's going to be another little person. <laughs> it's really, really exciting. Uh, I, the same as last time, we'll be having kind of two to three weekly growth scans throughout. Um, I've had my, I've already had, what have I had already? Five, I think. Uh, but as of... 24 weeks are now as of 26 weeks I want to say then my every two week scans will start um so yeah that will be happening too we've plenty of time to ask if we want to know what they may be but we have not asked that yet because again that's something else that's causing me a bit of anxiety like how will I feel if I'm having another boy um I know it doesn't matter either way and it's so strange because I never even this never even contemplated my mind when we had Jack I had no worries about having a little boy or a little girl and when I had a little boy I was thrilled he was just with us he was here he was safe as well that was a massive part um, and I don't have this urge in me to be like I need to have a girl 
I, I don't have that. But I'm also like, it would be nice to have like one of each. That would be nice. But if I don't get that, I'm not going to be upset. I just feel a little bit like I've got my boy. He's like the business. He's such a soul. Like I give him everything. And that's then when it comes into like, how do you spread that love? Like whether it's boy or a girl, how do you spread that love? But I feel like if I have a little girl, you're going to, maybe then I would start to feel like, oh, go out and get some, we'll go out and get some little like dresses because I've never bought dresses before. Maybe I might get that wee peak of excitement that I've not had already because I've had so much anxiety. But if I am going to have another little boy, I'm still going to have to go out and get the stuff anyway. So I don't know why I'm worried about it. It's just my brain at the moment has not been functioning correctly at all. Um, but it will be exciting and I'm, so excited and so thrilled and cannot wait to see what Jack is going to be like. He is quite excited. He will say to me, like, if I say to him, what's in mummy's tummy? He's like, baby, baby's in mummy's tummy. And he, we pat, we pat. He pats my belly. He comes up and gives them a cuddle. They kicked quite profusely the other day and he was next to me and I said, oh, put your hand here, Jack. And uh, there was like a big boot and he looked at me and it wasn't even like, sometimes if he's shocked about something, he goes, like this, it wasn't that face, it was more like a, like that was so exciting, what's just happened there, like I felt that and I was like, that's your little brother or sister, like that's so exciting. So it's going to be lovely, isn't it? But I am also very worried, like how do we cope? How do you cope? A lot of people say like, you know, going from zero to one is much harder than going one to two. I'm, I feel like I'm going to dispute that at this point. <laughs> Because it is hard work having a little one and it's hard work now more I would feel. Like see that newborn stage, I feel like that was a skoosh. Maybe it was just because Jack was like a good baby, I don't know, a chilled baby. But I feel like newborn stage was a skoosh this stage just now when he's getting attitude and giving me like, no, I don't want to do that, mummy. <laughs> and I'm like, well, son, we need to go and do that. This stage, when you're constantly trying to like compromise with your child and try and make sure you're not like just shouting at them all the time and like let's go and try and this out and you know explain to them without being too logical. This stage is testing, and I think that's probably why it's even that's maybe why the pregnancy is more difficult at this point. Like because when you've got a little person who doesn't have the logic in their brain to understand while well, you're asking them to do something, but at the same time you can't just dictate to them, like you've got to try and explain things to them and maybe you have to explain it many, many times. And while you're pregnant and also anxious and tired and getting bigger and can't lift them up and things, it just gets very, very tiring. I'm sure loads of people will sympathise with me there and understand what I'm talking about. So life, yeah, has been busy. It's got away from me a little bit. This light is doing my nothing. Can you see it flickering? I swear to God, I'm going to buy a new one. The light that I bought, I don't know, five years ago to do this has given up the ghost and it's annoying me the day. Um, but yeah, life has got away from me a little bit and this is the first time I thought, you know what, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to do this. Uh, I actually filmed an empties video the other day as well, so let's get that up as well. And as I say, there are going to be vlogs going up um, because I have been filming behind the scenes. Oh, there's Molly in the background. Do you saying hi? Hiya. Hi. Hi. Hello, lady. Um, so, yeah, um, I have been filming behind the scenes and I am going to get those up as well. Uh, hopefully they will coincide with the upload of this video and it going live and you can check it out if you want to. As I've said before, this does not mean to say that my channel is going to be predominantly all mum and baby now. It never done that last time. Jack is included in some of my vlogs. He's been in videos throughout the years since he's been born, but he is not a predominant part of this channel. That's because, really, he's not at any place to make a decision about that just now. And I feel like, it, you know, it's up to him. I'm not going to put his whole life out there and everything we're doing. Um, and that's just my personal choice. So it will be the same with this little one. But you will see them from time to time. And I'm sure they will be kind of, hi, this is so-and-so. They've got here safely if and when they do um, and just you know it will still continue to be all together Alana in my life and what is part of my life but it will not become mum and baby orientated just in case anybody's worried about that. I mean I am now 37 years old, I'm about to have another baby 
And I feel like I'm very much at a point where I'm like, who am I? What am I doing? What is the channel for? Like sometimes I kind of spoke about that recently in another video and I've seen quite a lot of ladies of a similar age group to me talk about it. And that's kind of why I wanted to do one off the back of that Jen Loves video, because I feel like it is getting to a point where it's like, people are either coming out being like dollar dollar bucks like we're in it to make the money we're here to be influencers i want to make this a living uh, there's less and less people i see that are just coming on to chat now so you know if you do find the time to watch my videos thank you so much give them a thumbs up because that means so much it kind of pushes the videos out there promotes them if you share the videos as well it does even more i would really really love it if you did and i know that sounds really crap coming from a youtuber that's barely been posting but if you do share all that kind of stuff, it would be very, very appreciated. And I hope that I will be able to get back into the swing of things and also interacting with other people on this platform and on the other platforms once I start posting on them again, because I have, I've posted like a couple of holiday things on Instagram. That is it. <laughs> I have not put a beauty post up there in a long time. But as I said, I never ever set out to be a beauty influencer. It just happens to be that that's a big part of my life that I, I love beauty, makeup, skincare, all that. I just love all that shit. Um, but I never set out with the intention that that was going to be my niche. I don't have a niche. I am just a woman. Like I've said before, the, the monologue from Barbie that America Ferreira speaks about, just an ordinary woman, ordinary Barbie, ordinary mum, um, trying to get through life <laughs> and trying to just deal with my own mental health and things like that at the moment as well and other chronic health conditions on top of everything else in daily life. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, please subscribe. That would be lovely. And I will definitely see you all again soon in the next one. Bye.